All right, I want to give glory and honor unto God. Hallelujah, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the precious Holy Spirit. Without their plan, you know, we all wouldn't be here this morning. But thank God for it. Thank God for it. I also want to give glory and honor, bring, give glory and honor unto our pastor, the shepherd, chief shepherd of this house, amen, and his lovely wife, Minister Monet. Hallelujah, I want to give glory and give honor even unto the, my fellow ministers. You know, continue also praying for me. You know, like I said last time, it's not easy getting up here, but we got to do what God called us to do. And their prayers, their prayers, we need each other's prayers. I want to give glory even to God for my wife, my helper, the one that loves me when I'm unlovable. You know, when I'm when I'm when when, when I'm a knucklehead at times. You know. You know, but she, she's right there for me. I truly can say that God really hooked me up. I thought I was following her on my own. <laughs> but he turned that thing around. I thank God for it. I want to give glory even for my kids, for Briara and Dwight, who's not here, but want to acknowledge them as well. Amen. So what we want to do is continue on from the lesson from last week of uh, saying yes to God. I'm going to pick it back up where... Um, we're talking about the song that I was listening to during the time. And, and, and I don't know if I made it clear last week what I was trying to say was um, the, the time that I was down and looking at streaming and looking at the messages and, and what Pastor was preaching and teaching on during that time, you know, it was like it was really ministering to me. You know, and I saw something different, you know, because I, I, I see his heart. I heard his heart, what he's trying to do. And pastor's not just preaching just to be preaching. You know what I'm saying? Never think that. But it just something something was different, you know. And I see him trying to commission us to really do God's will. You know what I'm saying? And to do it and to, to want to do it too. You know what I'm saying? But I saw that some don't want to do it. Because they're afraid. Because I was, I was afraid. You know what I'm saying? Not like that I got it all together like I said last week. I don't have it all together in this area. But this is what I believe the Lord was showing me to help me. And maybe it can help someone else. You know, so it was on the guidelines of the Lord asking you to do something. And you're being afraid to do it. Or uncertain to do it. So the thing of it is, is just to say yes. That's all God wants. It's for us to say yes, because we get fearful and afraid because we don't know, we're uncertain, we're unsure. But he's right there to be able to help us, but we don't see all that at the time. So just to give a little recap on it, we, let's go back to uh, Psalms 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. He says he's going to teach us the way to go. So him giving us a, a, a plan or something, a task for us to do, he's going to teach us what to do. He's going to direct us in which way to go. But see, we don't see that in the beginning or when he's asking us. All we see, oh, that's too hard. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I don't want to do that because, and some of us, we sit down and actually count the cost that this might uh, rearrange my life. You know what I'm saying? This may do this here. So now I don't know if I want to do that, Lord. And that's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I want to do it. One, because I felt inadequate in what, in what he was asking me, what I believe he's asking me to do. You know, like I said last week, I didn't know. You know, but I had to come to the point where I say, okay, Lord, your will be done. If this is what you want to do, let's go for it. You know, that's the only way I'm going because I was pondering. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to say last week when, when Eldon went over the vision and everything, I was actually in here and I was fighting with myself to see, you know, I understood what he was saying, but how was with the God, what God was telling me to do, how was all that going to fit in? And how does, because my thing is I want to do to help the ministry. That's, that's it. I ain't got nothing for myself just to help the ministry. From day one, that's what I felt. I'm here to help the ministry. That's it. So I'm not to go out on my own, do my own thing. No, I don't strive for that. You know, I'm, you know what I'm saying? So my thing, okay, Lord, how does this fit? And the devil was fighting me with that. You know, how in the world I understand. And I had to come and say, hold up, the devil don't want you to help nobody. So there's got to be God. 
You know what I'm saying? It has to be, he, he don't want to see nobody get delivered. So I'm playing this stuff in my mind to help myself to think straight because I'm crazy when I'm thinking. You know, I don't get it right away. So I had to come to that conclusion that, hey, this got to be God. So when, when mama got up and said what she said, that kind of helped me to burst through and say, okay, Lord, let's do this here. Whatever it takes, it don't matter. Whatever you want me to do, we're going to do it. And he just started, when I said that, he started providing, doors started opening to get the ball rolling. Right, and then when I ha I had to talk with Pastor, Pastor he went over there with me, and I was like, man, I'm looking for him to tell me no, because if he tell me no, I'm gonna leave this alone, because I'm not this ain't the way this for the ministry. I'm gonna leave this thing alone. I talked with Pastor, Pastor ain't said no. Now he gave me some direction on what the next step to do, but it wasn't like uh, cause I told him I said if you telling me no, I'm gonna leave this thing alone. He said no, uh uh. All right, but do this here. Do this here. Check this. And I thank him for that because my perspective, what I, what I see the Lord telling me to do, he came there and fine-tuned that thing to help me out. So I can understand how some of these people, they just leave here, you know what I'm saying, because God told them to do something, and they just go and do it. They don't get no counsel, they don't get no direction, no nothing. They just believe. Man, that's dangerous. And I thank God for that, you know. So he says, our state of mind should be where God leads is where we want to go. Mm -hmm. What God values is what we want to value. What God desires for us is what, he also is what we also desire for ourselves. When we say yes to God, we can relax knowing that God is in control and he, is al and he always wants what is best for us. It says, when we say yes to God, he causes our lives to be a blessing to others, and he blesses us with his peace, joy, and fulfillment, right? Now, we're gonna, I'm going to go on a drop. It says, even when it takes us out of our comfort zone, remember that. When it takes us out of our comfort zone, he still knows what's best for us. In this song, it was saying, our worship means nothing without saying yes. That's what we left off at, Right? Our worship means nothing. Say, God has called some of us a long time ago, even from our mother's womb. Aaron, you, uh, while I'm reading that, Aaron, I want you to get ready for the next scripture there, if you can see it from me. All right. It says, God is calling us to come up higher. He wants us to do more than what we see here, what we're doing right now. There's other things that he has for us to do. Now, I'm, like I say, I'm looking from the eyes of him talking to me and what, he, what I see with Pastor saying even to the body. God wants us to come up higher. He wants us to do more than what we are doing right now. We pick and choose what we will say yes to. Some of us don't believe what God is telling us to, to do or want to do. We, we choose it, right? There is more that God requires of us. So much more. We must seek his face and hear his voice. We must make up our mind. Be determined to say yes. We got to make up our mind. I told you, I had to come to that place where I say, okay, Lord, yes, this is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do. By, he said, by submitting our soul, our mind must say yes. Our heart must say yes. Saying yes may cost us everything. We must know that. Saying yes must cost, may cost us everything. What some of those things are, you may say. It says friends and relationships. Some of the people that you hang around say you saying yes going to cause that. It could be close family members, sons, daughters, all that. It costs us relationships because we're saying yes to God because they, they don't understand. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand the call that God has, has upon you. You know what I'm saying? The things that God is asking you to do. And they may not, he may not want them to come with you. You know what I'm saying? They may be a hindrance to you. You love them, but they may be a hindrance to you. You know, you look at the, the example with Lot and Abraham. You know what I'm saying? He should, Abraham should have left Lot where he was at. But he loved Lot. Come on, nephew, let's go. But look, 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 look what happened in the end, though. Now you got to go and fight some war to come and capture you. And had you stayed where you was at, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But all that, God worked all that out for a good. That don't mean he going to work that for a good in, your case, in, in our case either. You know, because he may not want them people to love them, but he may not want them to be with you. 
Someone else going to take up that. Someone else, he's going to send someone else to minister to him. He said, things that we may hold dear to us, right, may cost us. You don't know what those things are. Some of us do. You know, we have little things that we hold so dear, then God come, to, come and get it. We, we hear pastors say that all the time. You know, when anything you put before him, he's going to come to get it. He's going to come. Anyone you idolize, he's going to come. To, I know that's true. Because there's certain things that has happened to me that God opened doors for me to receive instead of me giving my eyes on them and thinking, oh, this is the blessing through this person. And God shut that thing off. You know what I'm saying? No, you ain't supposed to be looking to them. You're supposed to be looking to me. And it sounds like it's so easy. But when you're in that, in that mode, in that mood at that time, you don't get to see it. You, you don't really don't see it. Because your feelings and emotions get all wrapped up in it. He said, the thing that we don't want to do is what God is wanting us to say yes to. The very thing that, that you don't want to do, that's what God is saying yes to do. And if you know, you, I had to sit there and, and, and ponder and ask. I'm telling you, but it was crazy. You know, you would think it sounds so simple. Dwight, that's easy. You're helping, po you're helping folk. You're helping people. That's what God wants. But there was a fight within me to make sure because I want to, I want, one thing I want to make sure that I'm hearing from the Lord and I want to be right with the Lord. I want to do what's right by the Lord too. You know what I'm saying? I don't want, because that's, that's people's souls and lives. You know what I'm saying? There ain't nothing to play with. You know, and I wanted to, I wanted to make sure. But at the same time, you know, I, I'm supposed to be inadequate because it's supposed to be him. He tell me, he said, he, he didn't, pastor told me, he said, well, look, you know, you may not have to go to school. You may be able to just get the information that you need. He said it to me, and then I met this lady who I know that was in, that's in counseling. I went and talked to her, and she went to school for all this stuff. And she said the same thing, Dwight, you don't have to, uh, don't waste your money going to school because God can give you the information that you need. And that's what I was telling you when he started opening up doors, when I was able to find the, count, the courses and stuff, get certified in the thing. It, it just blew my mind that those things was right there for me. You know, but I was willing to go if he told me to go. You know, that was the thing. I was willing to go. Amen. You know, I was going to have to scratch my head and tickle my brain to get it to work again. But uh, I was willing to sit in the class if I had to. You know, he said, everything, the very thing that we don't want to do is what God is wanting us to say yes to. He said, do not be afraid. God is calling us out of dry places. Aaron, do you see that on the paper there? I got a few dry places here. That he want to, uh, he's calling us out of. You ready? Yes, go ahead. Depression. Feeling sad. He want to take us out of depression. You know, Christians do get depressed at times, yeah. I don't know why. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's always, God is always doing something. You know, he's always doing, he's always moving. Even when we don't see it, he's still moving. He's still doing something. This is exciting. This is a journey, yeah. There's highs and there's lows. There's goods and there's bad. But in the bad time, we don't focus that see, try to see what's good and the bad. But he shows us what's good and the bad eventually if we can get our mind right. So he, want, he don't want us to be depressed. The next one is? Worry. To feel uneasy, to torment oneself, or suffer from disturbing thoughts. So we worry. He wants to take us out of your worry. He don't want you to be locked or bound by worry, feeling uneasy. You're tormenting your own self. It's saying, how you tormenting your own self? Because you're thinking about what he's asking you to do and what could happen. You're thinking about it, that stuff may not even, even happen to you. It may not even happen. The very thing you think is, oh, this going to hurt me, this going to this and this going to that, it may not even go that way. It may be easy peasy to a certain degree, but it ain't going to turn out the way that you think it. And then guess what? It very well could turn out the way that you think it, but you still got to say yes. Because it's going to be better for you on the other end. As, he, as you say yes, he's going to walk us through it. And that's what I'm knowing. He's going to walk you through it. He's going, he going to walk you through it. And the next one is? Anger. A strong feeling of displeasure. A strong feeling of displeasure. You're mad. You're mad because here God trying to get you to do something, but you don't want to, you don't want to do it. You want to do what you want to do. Hmm. Now you're angry. Because everything that you seem to do don't work out. 
Because your desires, you want to do what you want to do. You know, the next one is selfishness. Thinking of one's own pleasure and not considering other people. Thinking of your own pleasure. You ain't thinking about helping nobody else. It's just us. Us four and no more, as they say. We ain't thinking about looking to help no one else. There's other people outside these walls that need Jesus. We may be the only uh, opportunity that get to know who Jesus is. So it's not just us. We're supposed to be uh, uh, healthy already. Not, not sick, sitting in the seat sick. No. We're supposed to be healthy. We're supposed to be... We're supposed to come to church, get fueled up to be able to go out and pour out to other people who are sick. Amen. And hopefully to get them to come into the house of the Lord where they can get the nourishment that they need to grow in Christ. You know what I'm saying? But if we just sitting there, we just focusing on us, what's all oh, woe is me? What's happening with me? What My thing was, it's, it's the most important thing. We can't help nobody else. You know, why would God send other the folk in here if we can't get ourselves together? You know, the, the, the hurt can't help the hurt. Somebody got to be delivered. Somebody got to be, you know, well. You know what I'm saying? We say God is the deliverer, and he is a deliverer. You know what I'm saying? Even though we're going through hurts, we're going through pains and, and everything, he's still a deliverer. He's still good. He's, he's still good. I'm telling you, he's still good. You know what I'm saying? And we got to portray that to other people who, don't, who feel as though that they, don't, they don't think God good. The next one is stubbornness. Refusing to change one's mind or a course of action despite pressure to do so. See that we get stubborn. You get stubborn in your, in, in, in your, uh, your attitude and the way that you think. He's asking you to do something and you get stubborn. You don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to. You're refusing to change your mind. He's asking you to do it. No, I don't want to do that. We can get to that place because that's why I was at. Man, I don't want to do that, Lord. Uh-uh. I don't want to do that. I, there's some things, boy, I'm telling you, my Christian walk, the 22 years I've been saying, there's some stuff I said I didn't want to do. But then when I, when I finally did it, I, I felt joy afterwards. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, okay, Lord, but see, I didn't see that then. But you got to give in, though. You know what I'm saying? You don't give in, you're just going to be in a tizzy. You're going to be in a tizzy. And he ain't going to leave you alone. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to get worse for us. And I don't want to. I don't want knowingly get stuff to be worse for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> knowingly, he say, once you, you refuse to change the course of action despite the pressure that he brings towards you to do so, you want to remain the same. The next one is discontent, dissatisfied, a restless longing for better circumstances. You rest. You, you get. You, you're longing for better circumstances. You want your situation to change. You're discontented. Pastor, we hear Pastor say that y'all looking like you're discontented, like you ain't satisfied. You know what I'm saying? You can't get satisfied because God don't want to do what you want him to do. So you're dissatisfied. But you're not looking at from his perspective, what you're asking for and what you desire is not the best course for you. But his, it's his course that's best for us. We got to come to that realization. His course is best for us. Now, what it all entail, Dwight's standing here telling you, I do not know. But each and every one of us is different, like I told you last week. And we all have a plan. God has a plan for each and every one of us. He brought us together to, to become unified, to be able to get his will done collectively. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So we, gotta, we have to say yes. You know, the next one is fear. Feeling of distress or impending danger, pain. So you feel in dis, you, you fearful, feeling distress. Like I said before, you thinking stuff going to happen to you when it really may not happen to you. But all those things work within us. That's, that, you know what that is? That's the devil's, he throwing them darts at you, them feelings from the emotion to get you to think that way, to get us to think that way. You know what I'm saying? That's him doing that. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, of a sound mind, right? So if we can believe that stuff, man, we can have, we can war against the devil with that. So when we get into our feelings and our emotions, we, that's why we need the word. And we say, you're going to see later, it says we're going to talk about meditating. You know, we need the word to be able to help to fight those fiery darts. That's the darts that he's throwing at us. The doubt, the fear, the uneasiness. He don't want to see us successful in doing whatever God called us to do. The next one is foolishness. Lacking or exhibiting a lack of good sense or judgment. That's, I'm telling you, I was feeling that. 
this, this to me don't make sense. I, I know, Lord, why are you asking me to do this here? You know, I'm, I'm comfortable at right, right where you got me at. You know, but you, you had to use your, think about it. Use your brain. Is this guy, why would the devil want you to do this here to someone, to help someone? Why would the devil want you to minister to someone? Why? He's not going to get the glory. God going to get the glory. Why are you fighting between those two things? Why you can't see it? Just trust the Lord. That's where I was at. And I know some of us are, you know, the same way. I ain't the only one. I know. You know, we, we, all, we all fight. There's foolishness within us. We, 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 we lack the goodness, the good sense of judgment. You know, he says, when we do not say yes, when we do not say yes, our children suffer. Say, our children suffer because they see our behavior. They suffer because they see our behavior. They see how we respond. How we respond to the things of God around here. Let's stay in the church around here. You know what I'm saying? Things be asked to do and we supposed to be doing stuff to collectively as a body. You say, no, I ain't doing that. They see that. They hear that. Your action's showing that. So that's, that tells them, well, if daddy can't do it, I ain't going to do it. If mama ain't going to do it, I ain't going to do it. They may not say that out loud. But they're saying that to themselves. And then that seed that you're planting right there is going to take root and start growing in them. Amen. You're going to walk it out. But you planting it and it's growing in them. Because later on, they're going to bring a harvest if you don't correct that thing. Amen. If we don't correct it, we stop. If we keep acting the way we keep saying no, we keep saying going against what, what the group is doing as a whole, you know what I'm saying? We're hurting our kids. Look at some of them around here. Some of them just don't want to be here, to be honest with you, because they know that they got to pay the cost because they're seeing us. See, you know, me and Brother Aaron was talking a while back, you know, when, when, when all of us just basically been here about 20 years almost. But we, went, we were always in a different time frame, so to speak, the drugs, the party lifestyle. They, God had to do some drastic stuff to get us in. Because that's what we needed. We needed someone like Pastor Monet to come and speak to us the way that he was speaking to us, to capture us. So now that we got captured and all we want to do is give up everything that we know is wrong. So we live in this stringent life and all they saw as kids was, well, you can't do this, you can't do that. And that kind of turned them off somewhat. But then we, we had, I had to apologize to my kids because at the time I'm looking at getting myself straight and this is what I needed. So therefore, if this is what I need, I think this is what you need. So you need to do the same thing. Amen. You know what I'm saying? But they haven't touched sin the way I touch sin. You see what I'm saying? So this is not going to affect them the way it affected me. So now we got to learn how to do this thing differently now. Amen. But we can, I still can't play you short and say, hey, don't go, don't, don't go uh, drinking because drinking going to cause this here. Amen. Now, I can't just let you go out and do what you want. No. Amen. Because you have a touch sin, but I don't want you to touch sin. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because you got a sinful desire within you that's going to rise up. You know what I'm saying? You're going to start having desires that's going to come. So I got to play my part. Say our behavior, you say our attitude toward the things of God. Say that's why our children suffer. They develop attitudes that's wrong toward the things of God. It causes them to have a hardened heart towards God. All because we won't say yes. Because we are the older ones and we are their example. And they're watching us. You know what I'm saying? When, 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 when it says that we need to come together and do such and such, and we all, some of us are staying, some are right out the door. Yeah. It's time to clean the church. Some going to stay, some going to run. Come on Man, we get here and clean the church together, we can get it done in 30 minutes. Amen. Opposed to having it done in two hours. But they got to see us doing it so they can come along and do it. Because when we die off and, the, and it continue on, they got to see, well, hold on. They got to have something to revert back to. This is what they did before to keep the thing going. So we got to... We got to be the, the right example before him. Amen. And it's just, I'm just using as cleaning the church, but there's other things that's there. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And when we pastor said we can accomplish more as a group than individually. Amen. There's power in numbers. That's right. That's what he said that before. You know what I'm saying? We can come together and we can get things done. We can tell, man, we can tell some stuff up. We can tell some stuff, some stuff up for the Lord and give him glory and honor. 
Say, in the end of the song, say, all God wants is yes. The next, I want you to read that for me, Aaron, after that. When we say yes to God, God would enable us to do whatever he requires. Yet, there may be some times when we are afraid to obey him because we do not know what will happen as a result. Sometimes obedience is costly. However, if we know that God, our, love, our loving Heavenly Father, who always does what is best for us, we should be able to trust him and leave all the consequences to him. Leave all the consequences to him. That's the place that, that's that rest that we're supposed to get to. Where we just rest here, and, okay, Lord, you got this. You know, ain't nothing I can do about it, you, you got this. I'm rest, if, you, if you don't bring it to pass, that's on you. You say it for me to do it. If it don't come to pass, that's on you. But I'm willing to go, Lord. He and my send me. We sang that song. He and my send me. You know, you got to get to that point. Okay, it's he and my send me. Where you going, I don't know. We don't always know. He know, though. But it's going to be for our good. The whole thing about it is saying yes to him because his plan is what works. He knows what... He, the plans are for each and every one of our lives, and he's directing. God is so magnificent, man, to, in, to, to be able to direct your life, my life, her life, all at the same time. Man, what a big God we serve. And uh, indirect the lives of those that don't even, that's not even thinking about him. Still directing their lives. You know what I'm saying? It, man, I see the devil, he just, he don't want us to accomplish nothing. He don't want us to do nothing, man. I want everything God have for me. I want, I want to see, I want to see everything come to pass. I don't know what it is, but Lord, I want to see it. I didn't come this far, this long, and not to not to make it. it ain't gonna be if I don't make it, it ain't gonna be because I didn't try. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying. Lord, help me along the way. I'm crying out. I'm, you're showing me things. Lord, I need great deliverance in some areas, Lord. I thank you for the delivering from the drugs and the alcohol and the running of women and all that stuff. That those desires with that was in me, Lord, is what I'm looking at now. The filthiness that, relies, that resides in me, God. Those evil thoughts that come up. The impure thoughts and stuff that come up in me, Lord. Lord, how can I glorify you in my body, Lord? In my mind, in my thoughts, how am I thinking crazy, Lord. I need help, Lord. Lord, how you, how you, why you chose me? Why? I don't measure up, Lord. I don't see what, what, I don't see no good in me for you to think, for you to see me worthy, Lord. And, and I understand it ain't about me having good in me, you know what I'm saying? But he, he makes us righteous. I understand that. But it just don't feel good, though. When those things come up, you can be, you can be, you can be in a store and a, and a song come on. And next thing you know, find yourself singing it. Why is that? Why I got to have that feeling? Why does that have to happen to me? You know what I'm saying? Why, why that, those, those thoughts and stuff come up? The galleries in my mind, the stuff that I've done in the past. The desires that helped form and fashion me before coming to Christ. I, I don't like that stuff, man. I don't. I want the true deliverance. I want deliverance in everything. I want to see him get glory out of me in every way. Therefore, saying yes to God really helps us. Recognize that God is the sovereign ruler because he all allows human beings the freedom to make choices that sometimes result in heartache, suffering, and even disaster. It may seem like he's not in control. It may seem like he's not in control. So let's go to Psalms 103, verse 19. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. His sovereignty rules over all. See, because certain things happen to us, we, it looks like God ain't in control. But he is in control. He allows us to have heartaches and pains and go through sufferings and stuff. But he's still in control. He ain't stop being God. God is God. He's going to continue being God. Even when nothing else exists. Amen. Fifteen minutes. We have faith in him. If we are going to obey God, we must believe who he is and what he says. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It says God has chosen the best path for our lives. If we will follow him, however, unbelief is the, is the enemy of obedience. And the consequences of rebelling against him 
are terrible. He said, God has chosen the best path for our lives. If we, if we, will, if we will follow him. However, unbelief is the enemy of obedience. Your, our unbelief is an enemy to obedience. And the consequences of rebelling against him are terrible. So we, when, we re, when we rebel against God, you know, we set ourselves up in a place where we got to get chastised. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 get, the, we get the paddle. You know what I'm saying? The way in, it means committee got to come out now. You know, sometimes that's what I, I need that sometimes because, I, like I told you, I don't get it. I don't get it all the time. And it'd be some time where I get said, Lord, why I didn't get that then? I didn't like whippings when I was a child. I'm, so, I'm going to be honest with you. I know everybody don't like to say, well, I just enjoy whippings. Just beat me. No, of course. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. You ain't got to do that to me to get me to do what you want me to do, what you need to be done. Just tell me. If I don't understand, I'm going to let you know. You ain't got to hit me. You know, I, I, I didn't get a whole lot of beatings because I learned the way to be sneaky. You know what I'm saying? To get, I made sure that I got, if I, was, if, if I had to wash dishes or clean up and stuff like that, I made sure I did all that before. So when I went outside, I don't want you disturbing me. When I wanted to go with my girlfriend's house, by Janet's house, I don't want you calling me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm trying to get everything. I learned that. That's what I learned. But I learned to be sneaky too, which was to my hurt later on. You know, but at the time, it sure felt good. I got them beat. I'm, I'm, I'm pulled one over on them. You know, you ain't got to beat me. Uh -uh. Mm -mm, that don't feel too good. And it says here, meditate. The next one is meditate on God's word. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. To obey, we must first know that the Lord wants, we must know what the Lord wants us to do. That's why he told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. To meditate means to mull something over in our mind and reflect on it. And that's what I had to do. I had to reflect on what he was telling me to do, Amen. what I believe he was telling me to do. I had to, to meditate on that thing. Okay, Lord, you sure this is it? You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I was fighting, boy. I'm, I'm fighting. I'm fighting in my mind to see, okay, what, what is this here? Why is this here? It says, okay, meditate means to mull over something, mull something over in our minds and reflect on it. If we desire to follow the Lord, the Bible must fill our minds and hearts and become our text for living. Meditation helps us thoughtfully consider his directions, promises, and truths and apply them to our lives. As we read and meditate on his word, it will challenge us to examine ourselves and, if necessary, change our thoughts, attitudes, and behavior. Amen. That's why we want to meditate on the word. Pastor was just telling us about that a couple of services ago. We're supposed to meditate on the word. That's what we mean, to think it over, to go over it. Play it in your mind. You know what I'm saying? Consider what, what, he's, what he's saying, what he's asking you to do. This is all on the premises of God asking you something to do. Right, but you can meditate on the scriptures anytime. You can meditate on the scriptures for a certain circumstance or situation that you may be in that can help you to see, okay, Lord, how you apply this thing to my situation or with the circumstances that I'm in. That's why we want to meditate on the word. And here he says, the next one is becoming courageous, which is Joshua 1 9, the next verse. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong. And of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, with other, whithsoever thou goest. Mm -hmm. It says, when the Lord picked Joshua to lead his people into the promised land, he told him, be strong and courageous. Do not 
tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God knew that as Joshua obeyed, he would face all kinds of difficulties. Amen. Same for us. He knows the difficulties that we're going to face. Right? And the challenges that require confident boldness. This has been the common experience of all the Lord's prophets and apostles. And it will be the same for us as well. We must be careful not to let fear stop us from fully obeying the Lord. Amen. Now, this, all this, what I'm giving you here is under the title, Therefore Saying Yes to God Helps Us. It helps us by, we, we show that we, when we say yes, we have faith in him. It helps us because we can meditate on his word. And it helps us because we become courageous. And then after being courageous, we then we get to learn to wait upon the Lord. We get to learn to wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 64, verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen. O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waited for him. It says God's timing is always perfect. But from our perspective, it may seem slow. If we focus on our circumstances or the advice of others, now this here, I, I found this here that I was like the advice of some, the advice of others can be helpful. You know, some just not just saying you don't supposed to listen to nobody. You know, no, no, God put folk in your in, in your plan, in your path to help you, especially your spiritual leader. Amen. You know, to get that's why we're supposed to run stuff by to help us. You know what I'm saying? So Let's not, don't get sidetracked with that. He said, but the advice of others, we may be tempted to jump ahead of God. When we wait for the Lord, we are not sitting idle, but are being sensitive to his directions before making decisions. We know all the, he knows all the facts and the perfect timing for every situation. When circumstances or outcomes tempts us to doubt, Remember that you can rely on him. Our faith is not blind. God has proven himself worthy and enabled us to handle anything that comes our way. So he is able to handle anything that comes our way. During that time, it just, it just doesn't seem like it. And he understands the feelings and stuff that we, that we go through and the emotions and stuff that, play, that plagues us and tries to stop us. That's why he loves us still. To be able to help us. But all he wants, all God wants through all of this here is for us to just say yes. Amen. Just to say yes to his will, his way, you know what I'm saying? The things that he want to do in our, in our very lives. I have found, that's the end of my lesson there, but I found some scriptures. It was about 10 of them that I uh, put down on paper just to kind of help us to say yes. I got five minutes left. Um... Yeah, you want you want me to give you the scriptures? James 4, chapter 4, verse 8 in the Message Bible. Say a quiet yes to God, and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Quit playing the field. Meaning you're going both ways. You're going either here or there. You, 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 uh, you're wavering. You know, you're playing the field. You ain't sin when you're doing that because you're not trusting him. We're not trusting him when we do that. So if we would say, yes, Lord, okay, whatever it is, we're showing that we trust him. Even though we don't understand it fully. What's the next one? Psalms 18, verse 30 in the NIV. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. He shields all that take refuge in it. These are some scriptures that I thought, that I found that was pretty, uh, to kind of, to motivate us to say yes. You know, what's the next one, Aaron? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, verse 20, 20 in the NLT. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. So he hears us when we say yes. It goes, to, it, it ascends to him. It goes up to, okay, they're ready now. They're ready now. You see what I'm saying? When we say yes. We're ready, we're ready, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? We read it. We saying yes, but we don't know. But guess what? He know that he can go the next step. You know, it's, it's like this here. If you, if you say no, God said, well, I'm going to do this here. If you say yes, then I know I'm going to do this here. Any way it go, it's going to either help us or hurt us. I'd rather try to be helped than to be hurt. But sometimes hurt is good for us. Now, we don't determine what hurt it is that's going to be good for us. He determined that because he had it all set in the plan already. What's the next one? Psalms 32, verse 8, NIV. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Man, that is awesome there. Mm -hmm. Just to know that he's going to instruct you. You know, I, I come from a background where I had to figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mom used to always tell me, say, well, go ask Dwight. He, he, he'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Go do this. You know, go ask me. Ask. I always wanted to go some, have someone I can go and ask how to do such and such. People come to me. You know, but here, I'm read this here, and it's like, man, that's a father right there that's instructing you. That's trying to teach you and, and, and guide you along the way. You know what I'm saying? My, my dad that was in the home with me, you know, I deemed him, you know, he, I saw certain things. He, he taught me, you know, how to work on a car and, and stuff like that. But when it came down to the nuts and bolts of being a man, how to do, what to do, you know what I'm saying? I was upset with it because I felt as though he didn't teach me anything, you know, other than the bad stuff. You know, that, that stuff stayed with me, the bad stuff. And I was putting that, I was, I was living by that. You know what I'm saying? But to show me how to be a man, how to love my wife, how to treat my family, how to do this here. Mama showed me how to pay bills and everything and all that. But when it came to all, one thing he told me, and I tell you, that haunt me today, and I just, I can, oh, I thank the Lord for delivering. He used to tell me, say, son, whenever you get paid, whenever you get paid, don't give your wife all your money. <laughs> that, I'm telling you what he told me. So when I got paid, guess what? My wife didn't get all my money. I fought with her. No, I'm not, uh, this is my money. It's my money. Your money is your money. Now, when you finish doing what, what you want with your money, leave my money alone because it's in my pocket. I got something for my money. And that haunted me. Now, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about I'm going to take care of the bills because mama showed me how to take care of the bills. But I, I noticed that I'm not that good with money. But she is better with money. And I couldn't see that then. I said, man, that devil boy, when, when, when I come to church here and pastor was saying certain things, I was like, man, that dude that didn't tell me nothing, man. <laughs> pastor said, boy, you got to let that man go. You got to let him go. And I had to let him go because guess what? His dad wasn't there for him. His dad didn't teach him. My grandfather was a merchant marine. He was always on the ships. So I can understand why he didn't get it because his daddy wasn't there. So I said, okay, Lord, I, I thank you anyway. I'm getting it now. But it surely is hard to break the way I feel, though. You know what I'm saying? Now, now I can give my wallet to my wife and I don't have no problem. You know what I'm saying? But here, you look, you need something? But you got to call me still. got to call me and say, man, can I spend such and such? You know what I'm saying? You just can't go on willy-nilly with it. You know what I'm saying? You got your own card and everything, but you can't go willy-nilly with it. You know? Just call me first because I, I might have something going on and you're going to spend and you're going to mess me up. You know what I'm saying? That's all. I like to give you the world. If I can last to the moon like this, say, I'll give it to you, girl, because you deserve it. You know what I'm saying? For putting up with me. But I'm telling you, boy, it, it, it's something, boy. It's just certain little things that we as fathers, man, we got to pay attention to what we're displaying before our kids, what we're telling them, our attitudes, our behavior. Man, it's going to affect you. I'm 50 years old, and I still remem remember that stuff. That stuff don't go away. It's still there. I got to fight with that thing now. So the, in order to, to be successful in it or overcome it, I just do the opposite. I just do the opposite. I try to. That's what helps me. What's the next? We got time for one more. Psalm 40, verse 8 in the NIV. I desire to do your will, my God. See, I desire to do your will. That's what we got to get to. I desire to do your will. One more. Can we get one more? Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. In the e easy read, well, ESV. Uh -huh. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Hallelujah. That was one of the scriptures the Lord gave me when I first got saved. That one right there. And I could not understand why. 
Why? As simple as that scripture sounds, I couldn't understand. Why did the Lord put that in my spirit? Because I lean to my own understanding. Because I'm always trying to figure it out. So y'all, we, we don't want y'all, we, we don't want y'all leaning to your own understanding. We want to acknowledge the Lord in all our ways. We want to be able to get to the point where we say yes unto God. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all very much for y'all time. That's the end of the lesson. I, I can't go any further. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Uncle Buddy. Leaving 10 minutes on the clock, huh? <laughs> yeah, you got some more? <laughs> I just saw, <laughs> I just saw the, uh, what you would call them? The, yeah, the A. That was number six, right, Aaron? I think it was number six, Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6 in the ESV. Say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. I'm telling you, boy, that was something to see that. Saying, all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Number seven. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, the NLT. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. To give us a future and a hope. See, his plan, he knows the plans for us, y'all. He knows the plan. See, the thing, we just want to know what that plan is. If he tell it to us or show it to us, it, it's going to either encourage us or discourage us. He, don't, he sure don't want to discourage us, so he'll do little things to get us to, to come in that direction. I don't know what the big picture is for me I, with the constant thing I see, it, you know, that he's telling me. I, I don't know. I can imagine what it would be like. You know what I'm saying? But I really, I really don't know. And is that the end all be all to everything he want me to do? I don't know. Maybe. But I look at it like this. Lord, you calling me into servanthood. Because that's basically what all that is. And that's what pastor teaching on. Us to become servants. In some shape, form, or fashion. That's the way he, God wants us to get to. Become a servant. And what capacity he going to reveal it to you. But we got to be willing to become a servant. If you don't be willing to become a servant, you're never going to get to the point where God, what he has for you. You're not going to experience. We're not going to experience the fullness and the joy that we're supposed to get out of God. We're not going to experience everything because we are fighting. We're being tossed to and fro. Which way to go? Should I do it? I shouldn't do it. I want to do it. I think I want to do this here. No, this is what God is putting on your heart. But I don't want to do this here. Man, that's turmoil. That's, that's like two people you're fighting with there. You, you, you really are. Like the, like you can see it, the good and the bad. You're fighting. You know? So we need to, if we just give in. And that's what I'm trying to do, give in. Next one is what? Psalms 32, verse 10b in the NIV. The Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. His unfailing love. So because we trust in him, he, he can't, his, his love ain't going to fail. He ain't going to fail us. He's not going to fail us. That's the, part, that's the point we got to get to. God, you're not going to fail us. But boy, it takes a whole lot to believe that. Amen. You know, it's because we see through our eyes the things that we go through, the circumstances and the situations. Elder, I got two more left. <laughs> you want to come up? <laughs> Number nine, right? Uh, yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 12 in the NASB. For you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Just because we say yes. Just because we say yes, certain things are going to start happening for us. We're going to receive the peace and the joy. Everything that we need. We're going to start seeing the stuff that we need is right on that pathway. Like I said last week, I couldn't see uh, the situation we needing to see the doctors and this here. All I saw was me paying for it out of my own pocket. You know what I'm saying? I know I couldn't afford it. But I couldn't see the, the him allowing me to go through the, the pain and suffering and get my toe and stuff amputated and everything. And everything else going with it. You know what I'm saying? To see that he was actually preparing me to be able to receive what I need on this end. You know what I'm saying? We, he, everything is, is right there. So, Lord, I want to stay in that vein, Lord. I want to stay. I know I'm going to mess up. I'm going to make mistakes. I ain't perfect, but I want to stay in that vein. I want to know how to be able to flow. 
how to be able to flow with you, Lord. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to, to say, I can't stand here and say that everything God asks me to do, I'm going to be able to stand here and boldly say yes. No, because I know there's a test coming after this here. Yeah. You know, I ain't crazy now. I know. But I want to know, okay, Lord, you're good. You're still good. I don't want to go back to that place where a few months ago and I was like, Lord, what in the world is going on here? I want to say, come on, bring it, devil. Let's roll. We're going to do this here because my God is big. He's able to do this. Amen. You know what I'm saying? He's able to. He, he know what I need, and he's trying to get something to me. That's why I want to get to the point. I really do because this here don't make sense to me. Now, I, I, I'm hindering myself in certain things because the way I've responded and I'm seeing it, I don't like that. I don't like, we don't like it when our kids respond wrong. You ask him to do something, there. what you mean, huh? I bet you, you know what I'm saying? We don't have, how you, just think if God did us that. You know what I'm saying? Boy, God loving you, hey, boy, I'm telling you. God had to be God, boy, because if I was God, boy, we wouldn't have nobody walking the earth right now, I'm telling you. You don't want to do what? Boop, you gone. You know what I'm saying? Boop, you out of here. You know, I'm telling you, God's something, boy. I'm telling you, he loves, boy, like no one can love, boy. I'm telling you, we, boy, he put up with stuff that we don't even put up with. You know what I'm saying? But he bad more to school because he's going to deal with it all in the end anyway. You know what I'm saying? But it's just the idea how much he really loves, how much he really cares for us. The last one is John, 1 John 2, 17, the NIV. The world and his desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. Plain and simple. Say the world and its desires pass away. You want long and desire for the world and stuff anymore because you see you're walking in God's plan. You're receiving his grace and his mercy. He's showing up in your life. He's doing certain things even through the ups and the downs. You say many other afflictions are the righteous, but the Lord will deliver from them all so that we're not oblivious, that we won't go through stuff. Yes, we're going to go through stuff, but he's still good. Amen. He's still good, and we're going to live forever with him. We continue to say yes. We continue to give our hearts and our minds and our attitudes the way we think everything over to him. You know, stop letting the devil punk us by keeping us in a tizzy thinking on those things that's not like the Lord and that's going to keep us from going toward God. We, Lord, we need, we, we need the Lord, and he know we need him. There's so much more he has for us, individually and collectively as a body, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for y'all time. Proverbs 3, 5 in the Message Bible. Amen. Amen. Saying yes to God. I don't need to pray. <laughs> Amen. So I'll just make you just do the closing right quick. Thank you, Lord. All right. In Proverbs 3, verse 5, it says this. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. That's the key thing to serving God. Verse 6, let's go to 6. It says, listen for God's voice. And everything you do, everywhere you go, he is the one who will keep you on track. Now, the main thing is, is that you have to get to the place where we don't try to figure God out. Because naturally, we always try to figure God out what he's doing. Why? Because we don't like to be in the dark concerning things about us. We always want to know what's coming next, what to do, you know, because in our mind, we try to plan our life out for ourselves. You know, I'm going to be so far by this age, I'm going to be doing, I'm doing all that stuff. But it doesn't work. So God says we have to learn how to trust him without trying to figure him out. Amen. That's hard. That's hard. That's something that's, that's innate in us from birth, that we always try to do that. Because we always got a mindset, I'm going to help God out one way or another. If God say, okay, your will is, I want you to, to go ahead and do this, then we're trying to figure out how to get there. <clears throat> you know, but God has a way of fixing us so that we won't know what we, what, how to figure it out. It's called when he brings us through the school of the spirit. You know, the school of hard knocks, experience, then we learn to let go and not, and not try to figure it out. Because what happens is that as he brings us through, then there are things that pop up that we don't see. For example, I'll give you a quick one. Take Joseph. Joseph had the dream that he saw his family bound down before him. He saw that, oh, that was a good thing. That made him feel good. But he didn't see how that was going to happen. Or when it was going to happen. 
So then Joseph thought he had it all figured out when he's telling his brothers and daddy the dream. And I was like, okay, y'all need to start bowing right now. And it's like, uh uh-uh. uh. They, they said, yeah, we're going to bow. We're going to bow you right into this pit. And it, it, they showed him right quick. But it was a process that God had to take him through to bring him to that point. And see, that's the thing that happens because actually he never knew that he was going to be able to be second command in Egypt running everything. But when he came out, all that happened. So what my point is is that you can't figure God out because most times we try to figure God out, we're thinking too small. Amen. We're thinking of something immediate that's gratifying self. And God says, no, that the big picture is this. Because in God's mind, when he does things to give us ideas, he never shows us everything. He only shows you enough to get your foot in the door, so to say. And then after that, he says he's going to move. And when he puts everything together, it's like, wow, this is more than I ever could imagine. But it's for a reason because in his mind, his eyes, his plan, his perfect will for our life is that he wants to save many souls alive. He wants people saved. He wants lives changed. It's never, his God's vision is not selfish. Whereas our vision is selfish. So that's why we have to learn to say yes to God without knowing all the facts. You know, this is, this is not like you go and buy a car where you're trying to read everything and know everything. You're not going to know everything. On this one, you have to say yes to God. It's called blind faith. Lord, I'm going to just trust you and say yes and then let you put everything else in order. You know, we're not used to that. Our mind says that I want to know everything up front. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It doesn't even happen in the natural in life. No matter how well you swear up and down you know somebody, then let something happen, and then you always be like, you changed. No, they didn't change. That was always in them, but you didn't know it. You see that all the time. You hear testimonies of people who've been married 30 years, and it took 30 years for them to do something that you didn't know that that person had before your spouse was doing. You'd be like, wait a minute. When you, oh, I've always been like that. But you never knew it for 30 years. Think about it. How many times have a period of marriage? You see that because that things just come up. And that's how God deals with us to get us to recognize that we can't run anything. Amen. So that means that I have to listen for his voice. And okay, Lord, and so he can keep me on track. If not, then I'm not going to say yes to God. I'm always tell God no or wait a minute or uh-uh, I'm not doing that. But you have to remember, we are not in a driver's seat. Amen. He is. If you want to be Lord of your life, if you want the promises. See, that's where we miss. Most times we all say, I want all God's promises. I want this. I want that. But he has to be in the driver's seat in order to get the promises. Why? Because he's got to steer you to the promises and the blessings. If not, we're going to miss them. Because remember, our vision, we're very short-sighted. Our vision only for what we can see right in front of us, God looks for the future. So he knows what will keep us alive and help other people. Amen? Come on, stand on your feet. Let's close out and get ready for the next service. Amen? So that way, he'll be able to keep our lives on track as you listen for his voice, but not only listen, but obey his voice. That's the key thing is in obedience. When we begin to obey God's voice, now we're able to walk in the blessings. Because as you have a person that listens, then God's favor is actually able to roll upon you. That's what we miss a lot. So let's, let's bow our heads and let me just close in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for this time, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Help us as a body to be able to say yes, Lord, to your will, to your vision for our very lives, for the ministry, for everything right now, Lord. That we'd have that willing and obedient heart to trust you and to do what you ask, Father. That we won't be ones trying to figure out your every move, but we'll be willing to have that resting type of faith, even as Isaac had, where he rested in you and just was obedient to whatever you told him, Father. So help us to have that same mindset that same attitude. We thank you for minister to the white, that as you touch him, as you strengthen him for the word that he's brought forth, Lord, as you continue to help him as he goes forth in his endeavor to say yes to your will, help him, Father, that all that you show him, that he'll be able to do it and fulfill your will in his life. And we thank you, Lord. Now prepare us for the next service, Lord, that we recognize that we're honoring fathers even in the next service. But Lord, help us to put aside the business of the day that we might come forth, Lord, and rejoice in you right now. We pray for the offering that you'd bless it. And yeah, bless those that have given that you give increasingly. We thank you now once again in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.
to the broadcast. Please feel free to contact us with testimonies of how the program has been a blessing in your life. You can also send any prayer requests. Our contact information will be displayed shortly. Thank you for clicking in, for tuning in to Smoking for Jesus Ministry. And remember, keep smoking for Jesus forever and ever. Love to hear from you. Please tell us how this broadcast has helped you. Send us your praise reports, testimonies, and prayer requests. Our email address is contact us at smokingforjesusministry.org or you can send mail to Smoking for Jesus Ministry at 1804 FM 2342, Burnett, Texas 78611. If you have been blessed and encouraged by this broadcast, we urge you to donate. Donations can be sent online by visiting the link below, smokingforjesusministry.org forward slash online dash giving dot html. Thank you for tuning in to Smoking for Jesus Ministry TV.